Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in the start of a new campaign in a special mod called Unification Wars Beta, in which we're led by Master of the Lines, and let's begin with the focus, shall we? The beginning. For too long I've stood silently among the shadows of time as a perpetual specter lingering among mankind's tail. Civilization has been torn asunder, and terror continues to burn in the fires of ambitious tyrants. This age of strife and suffering shall end, and I will be... It's undoing, followed up with a sigil light. An old man has come to me, offering his services to me and my cause. Many have come before me with such offers before, often in the pursuit of power and wealth. This one is different, however. He is clever and well-versed in ancient lore and wisdom. There is an air about him I cannot shake, as if I have met him before in another age. But I shall accept his services. Now, I was watching a certain somebody. Certain somebody. And uh, I figured, you know what? Let's try, let's try it out too. Actually, it was uh, ooh, the Blazing Children are killing the Blazing Children. But I was recommended to play this mod from several people from my Discord server. And I figured, you know what? Why not? I don't know that much about uh, Warhammer 40k. So we'll see what happens. And which this is a very weird map. And there it goes. The children have killed themselves. Okay. Can we talk about that in the first two minutes? Oh, well. An uncertain world. Out of all the worlds of mankind, none have suffered as much as its cradle. Terra. Once the sapphire jewel of the galaxy is now a blasted and war-torn wasteland. Five thousand years of ceaseless wars, nuclear strikes, chemical bombardments, ecological destruction, pollution, desertification, and multiple minor ice ages have rendered this planet down to a husk of a husk. From the ashes of ashes have emerged tyrants after tyrants, each one seeking to outdo the predecessor in an endless cycle of oppression and stagnation. For five thousand years I've wandered the waste of Terra. <clears throat> Occasionally serving one tyrant over another, and often traveling across the wilds for decades on end alone. I've kept to myself as I always have, but now something is changing. I have felt a shift in the warp these past years, subtle yet noticeable changes. There is no longer the constant turmoil in the warp that has persisted through the ages. Indeed, the storms are dissipating, and now that they are soon to come to a close, I know what must be done. The time has come, my friends. Of course, we're, we had the Magister's Temporal here, but oh, thunder upon the peak. The signs of my coming have been numerous. The village people speak of fresh good and water pouring from springs unflowing for generations. A young girl struck with nanoplague has been miraculously cured of her ails. And at the peak of the great mountain, lightning has stuck a rock there five times from a clear sky. The signs. The village folk have reported strange signs and wondrous events over the past several months. Pure, fresh mountain water has begun to flow once more from streams long dry, and a little girl has been cured overnight of a nano plague, a death sentence at such a young age. But stranger, less miraculous events are also occurring. Young men have disappeared into the night. A single golden star has been seen shining at twilight, and stranger still are the rumors of lightning strikes multiple times at the peak of the master's secluded mountain forest in the clear sky. As already, superstitions are spreading between the villages like a virus. Their master had come from the bust and took dominion over these valleys years ago, but rarely showed himself to be his subjects, or to his subjects. But to those who have seen him, they speak of a man wreathed in golden robe, shining brightly like a new sun beneath the smog clouds. They say they felt a deep closeness to him like son to a father, and an urge to devote themselves to him and his being to die for him, even... Already, a wide following is growing in the villages. They will know the truth soon. Cool. And also right now, we're doing uh, some cities here. Because we are, we are very tiny. That's how big we are, Imperium. Very tiny. Basically, what we should know as Tibet. Very, very tiny. But the Sigilite. The old man arrived just before dawn. I had been attending a meeting with Valdor and the newest cu custodes on the matter of the Legion's organization when I felt something... Something I had not felt for many ages... A presence had entered the palace, one stronger psychically than any here save for I. I left without a word and arrived at the eternity gate still under construction. Though this presence was strong, I sensed no malevolence or corruption that would come from an agent of the ruinous powers or even the powers themselves. There stood a man in simple robes. Seemingly his only physical possession, he was weathered and frail and wrinkled from many years of life, and for half a moment I dismissed him as another mortal beggar. Then he spoke to me in words not for human ears, but rather for the mind. They were words of greetings and humility, words that I had not heard for many years up until now. He asked to enter the palace as a guest, and I allowed him to proceed. Our silent conversation soon stretched through the hours, and I learned much of his figure. His name was Malkador, and he was one of the last of the Sigilites, an order I had known all too well. From the very first moment of our meeting, a mutual understanding of each other's true nature had been established. He knew that I was much older than I seemed, and I knew he was even older than he looked, but above all, 
Al Shia psychic power was beyond anyone in Terra, and perhaps beyond any throughout the galaxy, and though he was secretive and rather cryptic, I knew his plans and intentions for humanity were far nobler than any others on Terra. Then he spoke the first physical words I'd ever heard him or heard from him. I wish to serve at your side, my lord, and I know you will not refuse me, he said with a grin. Clever, old bugger. Scions of the Eagle, Children of the Dragon. We could also do the Ex Exertus Imperialis. Also, just like every other campaign, if I mispronounce things, please let me know in the below, because I definitely do not want to mispronounce things, even though my speaking can be crazy. But Scions of the Eagle. To the west lie a curious tribe of warrior folks who adorn themselves in images of eagles and phoenixes. They say the miraculous events that have occurred in the land are signs of the Kadna Bagna, the end of the end, and at its beginning an eagle shall nestle, nestle in the mountains and emerge greater and brighter than before. I will convince them I am the eagle, which we currently get 0.8 political power every single day. We could get some more weekly war support. We could seize guns from the tribals, but we lose a lot of uh, stability, which is not very good. But beneath the mountain, deep, deep underground, beneath ancient forgotten mines and tunnels, down to the lowest roots of the earth. I have toiled away for years on this project. Many years of failed experiments and minor defections have resulted in imperfections and flawed beings no better than the monstrosities commanded by the warlords I seek to break. But now, I believe that finally this project has been finished. It has not been without cost. Many an innocent life has been claimed by my experiments. And though I know their sacrifices was not in vain, for they have given me a better understanding of this science. I feel regret for the suffering. But now before me lie the fruits of my labor. Two men, born anew, designed to be the pinnacle of human strength and power. To this, I, to the first, I bestow the name Baldor, and to the second, I name Tyrannus, Custodes, and Catagis. Uh, they are the first of many to come, and so it begins. And actually, ooh, actually already on early mobilization. Ooh, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty good to do. I would like some more army XP, land auction. That'd be really good, because right now we only have... Actually... Oh, okay, so we finally got the things unlocked. I wondered why we were making a power armor without stuff here. So we have these guys. Thunder Warriors, which require power armor. And Ligio Custodes. Custodes. That looks really cool. Well, actually, can we compare these two? Um, Thunder Warriors, looking at right now. This has more soft attack. Uh, this has way more defense. Wow! 1440 versus 210. Holy bad words. Um, these are better organization. Are these? They're the same combat width. These have more suppression. Same weight. Supply usage. These guys use a little bit more. Breakthrough is 105. Their breakthrough here is 20. Jesus Christ. And they have more armor and 18 piercing. And the manpower usage is exactly the same. So we need custodian power armor for this guy. At least just use power armor. Power armor. Custodian. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, no wonder, because these guys cost a lot. This is what we're looking at right here. Age of Strength. This is just your normal power armor. While this down here is a custodian power armor, which is much stronger. Um, there you go. <laughs> Holy crap. So, uh, as much as I want to edit divisions, we can't edit those power armor divisions, which I really, really want. So we'll go partial mobilization so we can make some more stuff immediately. And, oh, I can't train anymore. Why? I can't train any of them. Baby, why do you hurt me? But children of the dragon in the northern valley sets a small yet ancient kingdom, isolated from the chaos of the Turin Wars for centuries. They speak of the yellow dragon, a fiery golden beast with a harsh temperature yet kind heart. They say that in the last days of the world's suffering, the dragon shall return to remake the world anew. I will convince them that I am the dragon. And of course it is a very high year, wow. 29,790, wow. And we have... Air XP, Army XP, but of course, no Naval XP, because that wouldn't make any sense for us right now, now would it? Ooh, we're lacking. Oh, that's a lot of guns we're lacking. You know what? At least make some divisions first. Maybe go down that much. Less than 20,000. Not bad. Power armor is coming along. Huh. Uh, Khan Paran. The Eagle Born. Uh, artillery, I like that. He had come into the court of the chieftains beneath the canopy of woven silk and Ox bones. The chiefs were huddled together around a great fire in the center of the tent, a safe haven from the frigid weather of the Himalayan winter. They were adorned in gaudy, ramshackle armors of gold and silver, etched with writings of an old tongue and decorated with vibrant feathers of green and blue, purple and red. The lord from the east was rather humble in comparison, wearing only a white cloak of tempered fur. Sit, the head chieftain told him. The lord did as requested, and I suppose you understand why we brought you here. And the lord nodded faintly. I do. 
One of the other chiefs shot a look of derision. There is unrest brewing among our people, Lord, and we know you have something to do with it. There is talk of the Golden One and the Lord of Thunder among the villagers here. Have you seen this symbol before? The chieftain handed the Lord a stone and carved it into, into it. It was a symbol of an eagle's head with four lightning bolts emanating from it. The Lord wanted to smirk but simply shook his head. This symbol has been found carved into homes and statues, even to our pillar of the Winged One. Tell us now, have you something to do with this? Perhaps. Accusations. The head chieftain locked his eyes with a blank black-haired lord, attempting to study him. We've heard of other peculiar events beyond our borders, too. Events in your lands, especially. They say thunder strikes at the peak of your mountain, and that children are rejuvenated from the suffering. Tell me, lord, have you heard of the Kadna Bagna? The lord smiled and shook his head. It is the end of the end. When the suffering of our world nears its conclusion, there will be events that herald its ending. Events that some among our folk have begun to see in what is occurring in your lands. At the climax of these events, I will come, the eagle. Or who will uh, welcome the eagle, who will spread his wings from the summit of the highest peak and take flight to each corner of the earth? The chief shifted uncomfortably. They say you are the eagle. A shout from one of the other chieftains echoed from out of the tents. I have heard enough of these blasphemous words. This man is no herald or prophet of our people. If a man is to be the eagle, they would be one among us. Be silent, the head chieftain snapped. He sighed. I apologize. We are all tense from the unrest occurring amongst our people. You must understand, however. That such a prophesied figure, false or not, will cause too many problems for us and for our land as a whole. The chieftain rose, sighing again. You seem like a good man, my friend, therefore I am sorry for this. How predictable. Revelation. Revelation. Before the blades could even begin to fall, the lord tore off his robe, sending out rays of light that blinded the chieftains and drove the men hiding to their knees with a single look. The would-be assassins held their hands over their heads, cowering, crying. The tent had become a second sun encased in a white ball of light. Outside, a crowd began to gather, the confused, the frightened, and the curious alike, a mask to the chieftain's tent, all the while attempting to shield their eyes from the blinding light. The tent canopy began to collapse in on itself, burning away into smoke by a crystal white flame. Moments passed that felt like hours, as all time in the universe had suddenly been slowed to a crawl and perhaps it did. Then from the light a figure could be seen, a great figure, encased in shimmery golden armor, with two vast rays of light that reached out from side to side like two great wings held in the grip of his right hand was the chief head chieftain. The figure cast the man forwards to his people. He struggled and staggered to his knees, cradling his hands. He looked outwards with pure white eyes, whose pupils were seemingly burned away by a primeval flame. He is here, the chieftain cried out with a smile of joy, tears running down his cheeks. The eagle has come. We are saved. So joins the first of many. An expansion without even a single shot fired. And these guys are okay. Not great. Actually, oh, just in case. Ad Shir Khan. Led by somebody else. So. Cool. Hey, at least we got somebody here. I'm not sure what's going to happen, so here. Come on over, guys. Come on over. See what we can do. Ah, basic machine tools. Very nice. Um... Dispersed. Actually, what is industry here? Because I don't want to make any mistakes here. Industry. Uh, bonus. Oh, recruitable population and consumer goods factors. That looks really good. A ton of industry. We only have two. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Um, max factors. Fifteen percent more is okay. Eh, it really doesn't matter, but whatever. Children of the Dragon. Terawatt technology sounds like really fun. Our own research sounds like fun too. But this just gives you a lot more resources, which are actually very, very important. I'm not sure how much map part is going to really play a role, because this stuff is okay. It's not bad. I like it. Max, infrastructure. Um, oh, the Dragon King. Um, over here is more industry. That's strong. Consumer goods and population. Even more population and even less consumer goods. And a research slot. Oh. Oh, baby. And nuclear production. Nuclear reactor construction speed. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's so nice. But the Dragon King, my friends, he had not passed through the lands of the Northern Kingdom for many a year. Yet the untouched beauty of the Dragon Kingdom was as marvelous now as it was then. Nestled deep into the mountain valleys lay a red citadel between snow and rock, decorated in statues and jewels that shone with dignity befitting the glories of the ancient world. It was a fortress frozen in time, unaffected by the all-consuming madness of the greater world. He passed through the silver doors of the citadel and entered the central keep. It was once a temple dedicated to an old world faith. Now, long since dead, sitting upon a ruby throne was an old and haggard man, his long beard grayed by age. His silken robes blended with the ruby colors of his seat, and practically all but disappeared. My friend, the dragon king, croaked with a warm smile. 
Master of the lines. The Lord bowed his head to the king. I knew you would come. The king tried to pull himself out of the throne, his hands struggling to support him, and his legs shivering in weariness. When he finally rose, he stumbled forwards towards the Lord. Do you know how old I am? I cannot say, the Lord replied. The king laughed. When I was a boy, I watched this temple be constructed. When the world burned, I hid in its tunnels and passageways. Because of this, I was not worthy to be the dragon. I was a coward and fool then. And though I have changed much, I am still flawed. But you... The old king took the Lord's hand and held it as firmly as he could. I know you've been here longer than I have, and I know no, you have accomplished more than I ever will, and I have felt the shift of tides in the realm of darkness as you have, and now that you have emerged, I know you are the dragon, and I know what you must do. Your kingdom will be safe. The first two, first sons. From the songs of the Eagleborn and heirs of the dragon nobles emerge the first of my finest warriors, the Thunder Warriors and the Legio Custodes. They will be my right hand and fists that shall bring this divided world to heal. Great. Ten divisions. Actually, then what? I do that. Domination. An ultimatum. Ultimate to the remaining tribes of the Himalazian Mountains. Kingdom of the group. Infrastructure. Tribes. Thunder Warrior Legions are recruited, but Legio Custodes. Thunder Warriors are nice, but Jesus Christ, I've got to get Legio. I mean, this is... You, that's... Mm, that, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. Look at that. Just... Yes. Yes. These guys are cool and all, but... Just... Ah, there's no... Mm, mm, baby boy, I want... I want to do the ultimatum. Also, we got to do some other stuff here, too. Um, let's say no. I want to make sure we get an attack really hard. Ooh, aeronautics campaign? Uh, that's not bad. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Range and speed of the Valkyrie transport. Defense and bombing for strategic bombers. Or blueprints. Cast. Ground support's not bad. Um, I think up, what we want to do next is construction one. Uh, but it is still June 17th, which is fine. Whatever. Get some more reinforcement. That'll be fine. I think I want to... Uh, why do I have to make a choice? Actually, no. Wait. Requires... Oh, so you can do both. Terrawatt Clan. Okay, I didn't. I thought you had to go this side and go to the left, or this side and the right. Um, industry is nice and all, but you can do that eventually. It is imperative for us to conduct our own research, so we do not de depend on someone that can portray us in the future. I, I, I don't know. I want to see what this happens, though. The Terrawatt Clan is much more advanced technology compared to any other state in Terra. If we approach them with the knowledge of the Dark Age technology, they can provide us with improved technologies. I want to see what happens, because this is kind of unique, you know, 75% research bonuses for three of them. It's pretty darn nice. That's pretty cool. But, ha, ah, ooh, hello there. So we got some power armor, fully maxed out. So you got those two. And then we have Command Squad Valdo. Now, they're not full strength yet. But even if not, I mean, look at that. Just look at that. Defense is 720. They're a little slower. They have 100 more HP. They have double, literally double the organization. Recovery rate's better. They don't have reconnaissance. They use more supplies. They have a little bit more soft attack. Triple the hard attack currently. Five times, four times the amount of defense. I mean, that's so much more breakthrough and a little bit more armor. I'm just... Wow. And do I give it to you, apply to this stuff too? Space Marines, Thunder Warriors, Legio, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, yes. Please. Oh, actually, and I want... I mean, you guys are gonna stay all together, but still. Um, up next, dig up. Oh, that'd be actually really good to get more excavation stuff. I don't get more war support, but next, I want to get some army XP. Maybe. Ooh, do we have anyone else here? I got no Hogan Miller. Terrible technology. Ooh, we get more PP though. Yes. Oh, I gotta do that one. I. If you know me, if you know me at all, if we're not getting more PP, I don't want it. I want more PP. More PP in your life is good. But after that, I, I definitely want to go with uh, the Terrawatt Clan. Except. The wise Terrawatt clan have chosen the right decision and have imparted their knowledge of new technologies into, onto us in exchange for the learning of archaic technologies as well. Our army will utilize this new technology very, very well. Oh my goodness. Um, where was the research slot one? That's so strong. I guess it was down here, so we can kind of wait. Uh, domination. I mean, I'm sorry, man, but Legio Custodes, you, you can't train anymore. I want to do this one, but... Let's see what our guys can do. Domination. For all its virtues, the Himalazias are still a savage and barbaric land, prone to infighting, religious violence, and anarchy. There can be no peaceful route to unification, for words alone have never brought peace, much less in these times. This land will adhere to order, or it will be punished. Also, I don't mind saving in front of you guys, just because you never know if we might need to save. Hey, look, TNK. Think Tank. Awesome. Okay, so, who do we get war goals on? 
Kutani Sar. Okay. Lucy Impact. Sarkani. Uh, how strong are these guys? They have Aftermath of the Age of Strife just like us. They're going to get more weekly stability. We have no idea what they're like. I have no idea. So, this could go very poorly since we're fighting in mountains. Whelps of the Waste declare Whelps on the Waste. Guys, killing yourselves is probably not a good thing. Regardless if it's in game or not. Just. Just. Never mind, in general. In general. Then anyways, anyways. Um, actually, can we just go to. We need more war support. We won't have enough war support for that. Give me your PP. Just. Mmm. Oh, 1.13. So nice. Domination, baby. And then. Actually, what resources are we missing the most? We're actually looking pretty good. We need rubber and we need some adamantium. Adamantium, yeah. So I think I want to come down here because it looks really good. Mountainous factories. To expand our industry, you must utilize all terrain we have, which is mostly mountainous. Luckily, our scientists have found methods to can still construct factories in these harsh climates. Construction must begin at once if we wish to increase our industry. Yeah, let her rip. I, I want to see what happens. Um. Oh, yes, we got some... Oh, oh my god, seven. Oh, charismatic. Chance to get sick, minus 100%. <sighs> yes. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> this is cool. This is really cool stuff. I like this. This mod seems to... Uh, has a lot of potential. Oh, you're only half... Oh, you're a little more than half strength. Custodes. Oh, yeah. Thunder Warrior. Wait. So, this is better then. Arak Taranis. Yeah, it's not bad. Semonosis. Semonas. Oh, nothing there yet. That sucks. Well... Well, I guess I can go to this one. I hope we can win. I know we're going to probably struggle. So they have one division here. And I mean, it's mountains. I mean, it's not going to be very good for us. We'll take quite a few losses. I mean, but if they don't have enough divisions, we'll be okay, right? Especially if we cut them off from the capital, so. Um, yeah. We've lost 666. That's a bit too much for me, but... Oh well. All right, who else is next? Um, just a whole bunch of people on Therusi Impact. They're probably actually a little bit stronger than us, or not, a little bit stronger than the last guy we just beat. And civilian oversight. Ah, oh, darn it. Actually, we got cavalry here, so um, let's uh, d duplicate you guys. Actually, oh, can we not duplicate this? <gasps> oh, we can't duplicate it. Dang it. Oh, that sucks. Um, these guys are okay. Suppression's eleven, but these guys have better suppression overall, twelve. So, so. um, so be it then. We're gonna need more guns. Oh my gosh, we need so many more guns. There you go. You know what? We'll throw you on here, but we're not gonna make any more. We'll make mostly infantry for now. If we need to, we can make them later on. Uh, yeah. There you go. And just in case, I'm gonna send you guys here too. Oh, do we have any plank? No, we don't have any planes. Gosh darn it. The Himalayan Mountains. Very nice. So after this long focus, we're going to go immediately go and do Autonomous Industry. Or we go over here. Uh, we might want to do that. Excuse me, more reinforced planning speed. It's 35 day focuses. We do get more uh, Geno Soldiers for 15% more attack. But then again, our industry is really good as well. I love the industry. Hmm. And it requires all this anyway. So we're not going to be able to get that anytime soon, realistically. Maybe we'll just do new factories, just so we can get some more factories going. Although converting factories is an efficient way to produce more equipment, we need to build war-dedicated factories which are faster to build. Nice. Cool. Alright, it's so a little bit ahead of time, but I don't really care. Uh, Adamantium refinery. Oh, we can actually build those factories here. Oh, that's really good. Uh, let's go over here and grab some other stuff. Auto guns, Phobos bolters, plasma guns. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, my boys, let's go on in and beat the living crap out of these people. If we need more guns, we just take it away from them. Did we just cut them in half? Oh, uh, yeah, we did. Good. Oh, we're not winning here, which sucks. Oh, look at all these things. Little, little, little huts. Like like pizza huts. Wait, what? We're taking a lot of losses. It's alright. For now. It's alright for now. Um, Just head on down there. Is that Wakanda? No, Wong Duck. Not quite Wakanda. Yay! Did we get any guns from them? Oh, yeah, we did. We actually really did. That's actually really nice. Even though suppression is going to be kind of an issue here. Solari? The V drives? No, not them. Cyclic Kingdom. Oh, how about this group here? And you guys here as well. Uh, we'll do it from the top. Cool. Ah, nice. 
And new factories, so we can get way more guns, because that's what we're lacking the most. Wow, we have 9,000 things of power armor. Obviously, it's not the power armor that we really, 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 really want, but hey, it's okay. It is what it is, but after this one, we'll go ahead and do... Hmm, that'd be good to get immediately. Autonomous industry. The ever-developing technologies of robotics have gave, have gave fruition to basic autonomous industry. This will both be beneficial for our production and population, as we can manufacture more equipment and dedicate more manpower to the front lines. These guys don't look too tough, and if we take them out, we can get their guns, so... Go in, boys. Go on in. Oh, hello there. Time for you to die. We do need to expand our... Uh, oh, blood on the Kutan. In the valleys of the Kutan, two newly born Thunder Warriors make a brutal stand against the Kutani. Ooh. Oh, would you like that? Would you like an encirclement of a single division? Yes, yes we would. Very much so. We take the towel, and then they won't be able to move and get any more organization. Yes, good, yes. Immortal Empire declared on the Akami Akamenide Empire. Oh, hey! Oh, all I got was Age of Strife aircraft. You know what? I'll still take whatever aircraft we can grab. Sick of Kingdom. I want to expand all these areas as much as possible, so... Realistically, you guys do this. It's fine. I'm trying to gun for the capital, so we'll go with a, a Bing Bong. And now we have... Really bad. Okay. Artillery would be nice on our guys, actually. Just give them a little bit more of a push. Just a little bit more. Because we have enough artillery for that? No, but that's okay. View. Make sure you go high. I want you high. <laughs> I want you all high when you're watching this. Cool. Let's let them get around. And we'll get some new factories, which would be great, 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 great. Oh, I got some output. I got some fuel storage. I don't know if we need that, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Arty stuff. Oh, I want to, I want to just blow those men. Mmm, okay, well, maybe not. But new factories. Autonomous industry. Yes, yes. So after this one, we might as well just do industrial servitors, right? Improved industrial robots have been theorized by our scientists, and now it is time to implement them into our already existing autonomous industry. Increasing the autonomy is inevitable, and will only help us if we accelerate this process. They don't look really that strong. So, the faster we beat the living snot out of them, the faster we don't have to deal with them, right? Can we go to... No, we cannot. Darn it. Oh, wait, wait we get two of these guys. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, before we choose anything else, what else do we have around here? That's not bad. 10% is pretty good. Operative slot. Eventually... Ooh, more offense. 5% more. Anything else for here? Artillery. I mean, we'll get that eventually. Industry. Stuff like that. Oh. Oh, we can't... Hmm. We gotta be careful about manpower then. But oh well. Military fears then. Okay. If you say so. There you go. Nice. And they have a total of a single division here? Yes. Yeah, fighting the mountains is god-awful, but you know what? Everyone's going to take a little bit of a hit here. Move on in, baby boys. Cut each other off. Especially in that middle right there. That'd be good. Um, and happy 29791, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Is it time for more research? Well, I already clicked on it. Whatever. We're going to keep doing it. And now they've been fully cut off from each other. Oh, I should use more planes. There you go. Cool. And this is probably costing us quite a bit. Yeah, let's look in worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, but whatever. Actually, do we have an intelligence agency? Wait, let's create one. Logis Strategos. Just because we can help put down resistance, that's why. Alright, so who's remaining here? Dugani, Kamak State, Salari. Salari, Dugani, Kazakh State. Um, you have the biggest. Widest hips? No. Um, you got the biggest area we could probably attack. One, two, three versus one, two, three, four, five. So that'd be better. Uh, we'll probably go with. Hey, just got the best birthing hips. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Give him some time. We need time to make more factories and or no, oh, yeah, technically more factories, but more guns really. Twenty-eight a day is not enough. We're trying to make more civvies too, but still not enough. So after this one, yeah, we'll do industrial service stuffy, stuffy, stuffies. We still need to trade away for our stuff, which is really nice. Uh, it's slowly getting worse. Somewhat worse. If that's a case, we can cut this down too. Looking a little better after we got rid of one more. Considering power armor needs to be better. Um, we can keep doing that, but let's keep working on these factories. And let's go on ahead. Should do okay here. Nice. Good. And take the tile, and they're cut off. So now we have a total of 12 factories going at the same time. Awesome. Thank you. 
followed up with what? Fuel, fuel is fine for now. I'm not worried about that at all. Land auction is coming along. Auto cannons sound like a lot of fun. Vanquishers. Oh, we have no naval stuff too. So I just realized that as well. Planes. Can we get any better planes? No. Uh, oh, more max speed. Even though we're not really using planes too much right now, we might use them later on. Mountaineers might be really good to use. Uh, I, I, we can research it. Why not? We can research it. So now we got some bigger lanes to fight through here. How is the fastest way I can get to the capital? Doesn't really matter. We'll go through here. Bing bong. Like that. Alright, minus... Oh, that's looking a lot better. Look at that. That's a lot better, actually. And does anyone have upgrades? I kind of doubt it already, but hey, you never know. Mecha Unran has capitulated. Very nice. When in doubt, become more offensive. Ah, good. Mm, look at that one. Well, it's all going up everywhere, so... Help suppress them. Suppression, suppression, suppression is always nice. It's always nice to suppress people. And go on in if you can. This group doesn't look too strong. Ah, uh, yes. A good amount of army XP, and they've been surrounded. A single division goes bye-bye. Get those horses going. Ah, uh, Kachok. Kachok, yeah. Into war. Um, yeah, it's all ahead of time. You know what? Let's get some more speed. Can we actually have any bombers for this? We might as well try, right? Age of Strife. There's a lot of Age of Strife. Oh, wow. Oh, that early plane wing. Okay. Uh, okay. Why not? Oh, gosh dang it. There you go. Good luck. You probably won't honestly need it. Alright, and we almost have them all done. Well, actually, I probably just want to capture the capital as fast as possible, so. Alright, gun-wise, still about the same where we left it. Power armor is minus 244 for the really good ones, but that's okay. So after this one, hopefully we can do... Ah, Kingdoms of the Himalazias. The valley kingdoms of these mountainous lands are many and older than entire living civilizations, having been relatively unharmed by the tragedies of our age. These kingdoms are one of the last bastions of ancient nobility and culture, and they will serve as the bedrock of my future empire. Ah, more PP. Delightful. Chief of the army. Oh, we gotta go more to attack. I don't think they'll have enough of a war economy there. We could do that as well. That'd be kind of nice, but we don't really need to do that yet. Uh, that'd be pretty good. I like more attack, but we're doing pretty darn well. Let's build up a little bit faster. Delay, and we'll do some of that too. I should not attack to that late. Give us more guys to go there, because you cut, completely cut them off, so. And we are almost there. Oh, you pieces of doo-doo. You large pieces of doo-doo. More range and speed, why not? Actually, are we doing anything with air? Doesn't look like it's too much, so. Good. Five hundred versus four twenty, not bad. Keep it blazing. Come on, please. Are they doing force defense? No, but they're close to dying. Good, and because this is the last tile, they cannot do anything. Kingdom of the Himalayas. Himalazias. Cool. And let's do something that's kind of short. The Exits. Exitus Imperialis. The Imperialis Militia, we are to raise 100 regiments to support our efforts of unifying Terra. They should be taken from the newly conquered lands and areas that have pledged fealty, but not yes, yet assimilated. Their task is to, to bulwark our main forces and to combat dissent and anarchy in lands that have not fully yet adopted the Imperial ideal. The Emperor has stated that he has foreseen great deeds and triumphs by these human irregulars, and who are we to doubt his vision and wisdom? Oh, they're full, they're full strength. Full strength daddies. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't love full strength daddies? Dramuk Song. Dramuk Song. Awesome, we got them all. Followed up with... Oh, the tribes of the Himalazias. Oh, wait. Oh, we could have done this one anyways. Oh, domination. Well, at least we understood what we can do here. The first unification, though. Ooh. Oh, we, we need this one first. Okay. The tribes looking in the mountains are a strange folk with stranger customs, isolated from the wider world, though likely for their own good. For all their oddities, they are a strong and hardened people, diligent and honorable. They will serve well as the backbone of my future empire. 
And my friends, right now we are almost done with the first unification. The golden bells ring throughout the mountains, echoing in a chorus of glory. The Himalayas are now under my dominion, and now and forevermore. As I look south, beyond the slopes of the great mountain's peak, I think of what shall come next. This is but the first step towards the rebuilding of mankind, for there are many battles to come, but now I am ready. We did finish the tribes in which we got some Thunder Warrior Legions, but as you see, we got 24 divisions of them. Look at that. 24 divisions of this power armor. Obviously, it's not the better one, but that's okay. But the first unification, it is done, my friends. In less than a year, I have united the desperate wilds of the Himalayas from the Tagaric Mountains to the fringes of Zeg. My dominion is absolute. The ancient peoples have lived here for generations, kneel to me, hailing me as their overlord. My rule shall be one of healing and reconstruction, for I shall make these lands thrive again as they once did, though some may still resist. The people's love for me drown out those who would refuse my new order. And all across the lands I hear the chants of my thousand names, the Lord of Lightning, the Dragon, the Eagle, the Master of the Line, Savior, Master, Leader, Father. I've been known by many names in my millennia of existence, though most are forgotten to me, but if I am to be the leader of man, I should not be known by so many al aliases. Melkador understands this and has come forth to me to propose a final title, one that shall be known to all on Terra and beyond. When I set forth from these secluded mountains and into the blasted wastelands that were once my home, I shall make these barbarians know who I am. When I speak of my name, the weak and contemptible shall flee and cower. Denying my name, the brave will stand and fight, challenging my name. The wise will lay down their arms and submit, for they know, will know, my name is true. I am the emperor of mankind, and my age has just begun onwards. Absolute oh wow. The Emperor. Just far we'll go goes way down. The first campaign, the border set, the Himalayas are under my dominion, and now I shall march forth into the rest of Tara or Terra. To the south lies lands of Ind, dominated by petty kingdoms and lords, and that shall be my Imperium's first foray into this broken world. The unification wars have begun, and all of Terra will kneel. And we got a lot more PP too. Oh well we'll do that one right now, because we can. The Emperor's Protection. Ooh, we create our factions. The Emperor Protects. Advanced Autonomy. And we have Aftermath of the Edge of Strife. And we did core all those different areas around here. So even though it looks like we got a lot of resistance, it's all going down, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. So basically, we unified Tibet. Very cool. Oh, and I see Enclave up here, huh? The Saragorn Enclave. Do you have power armor? Whoa, Techno Barbarians. Whoa. Psy Breeding. You say breeding, and I'm like, whoa. Ooh. But first campaign. And to Palas. The kingdom of Palas lies directly at the foot of the Himalayas, an old realm with an older heritage. It is here that my Imperium shall first look towards in its quest for unity. Very good. And happy almost 29792. Close, but not quite there yet. Industry wise, let's go with industrial goodness, shall we? Yes, we shall. Oh, stability is 80. Wow, 85%. It's still going up, too. Nice. The War Council. The four watch the hollow capture. Displaying a map of the southern lands through an electric hue which hummed with an occasional flicker. The two generals stood over the capture, studying its details, but they watched from behind in silence. In Valdor spoke. A proud land and one unlikely to submit easily. I have walked through their realms before and I've come to know some of them. They despise outsiders and for good reason. Arctic Taranis nodded in agreement to I. These kingdoms haven't seen proper order over their lands in centuries. Words don't cow them, I say we struck now and hard. We'll give no quarter to any of them. They will submit to our rule or they will die. Baldor frowned. We are not here to slaughter these people, Tirana. Such a destructive tactic would only be more of the same for them. We are here to rebuild the world, not tear down. The Thunder Warrior barked a laugh. You've gotten strangely soft, Valdor. When I was a boy, my clan cast me into the valleys, and I had to fend for myself for a full year with no food, no water, no skills. You are raised in high status, all gilded and pompous, without a drop of brawn. This isn't a kind world, Valdor. Maybe you should figure that out before you start lecturing me on. He rose a hand, a sharp, tingling feeling coursed through the bodies of all those present, and a sudden presence of authority had made itself known. The two generals bowed their heads as silence filled the room. From the Emperor's shadow, Malkador stepped forwards. You forget your courtesies, Arak Taranis. Do not be so rash in your judgment, my friend. Taranis bowed his head once more. I apologize, Lord Malkador. I forget myself. Malkador nodded. Do the topic of hand, then. Our campaign through Inn will begin, of course, with the northernmost kingdoms. Perhaps we should discuss them individually. Palace? Karumpa? Oh. Palace. Sure. Into Palace, because we're going to go there first. And into Kamar... Kamarupa. The land of Kamarupa is a troubled one, populated by the victims of the cardinal's barbar barbarism, as well as the native warrior castes. 
cornered between the Yudonisic block and Morian. They now lie directly in the path of the road to unification. Palace. The hollow capture zoomed into a particular region of the map. The kingdom of Palace lies directly south of our Imperium, said Malkador. In many ways, some would consider it to be the Indic Kingdom, for it was this land that there was the birthplace of the new Indic civilizations after the end of the Golden Ages. They hold their ancient heritage and traditions close to heart more than any other kingdom in Ind. The hollow capture zoomed further into a major hive city, its spire bending the most the second dimensional map outwards into a triangular shape. Hive Ganja, Valdor said quietly, a city of ivory lords and palaces, cleaner than its contemporaries at the very least. Indeed, Malkor murmured. Though proud and stubborn, the ivory king of Palace is known to be more receptive to outsiders than most of his, among his peers. Thus, diplomacy may be a viable option. Actually, do we have any factions? Oh, hello. Where are we going? Any factions? The Indulzit block. Holy crap, that's insane. Um, I do want to take Palace first, so yeah, we'll see what happens. This is going to probably be very extremely bloody. But that's okay. We like a little bloody from time to time. We have a lot of planes here, but they're not good. I don't think they can really do too much against anybody, so. Alright, and... Actually, since we're here, how many guns do we have? We don't have any. Okay, power armor. It's not too bad. A mission to Ganja. My emperor, Malkador, said with respect as he bowed. He nodded. Rise. The old world seemingly struggled back to his feet. I apologize, my emperor. My youth has long left me, and my legs have grown weak. I fear I am not as nimble as I once was. The Emperor could only shake his head. I see you have practiced your facade even amongst my presence. Your legs are as weak as your mind, Malkador. He smiled. Facade, I assure you. My weaknesses are no ruse. The Empire Emperor smirked very well. Why have you summoned me, my Emperor? For a mission? For a mission. The Emperor produced a hollow device. Pressing a button, a hollow map of palace emanated from the device, enlightening the chamber in a bluish hue. I am sending you to the city of Ganjur to meet with the Ivory King. Malkador bowed his head as you command, my Emperor. And what would be my purpose in this meeting? To announce our hostilities. To negotiate a peaceful unification. Um. Kamarupa. Uh, we. Mm, I don't know. I did dom dom domination. I kind of want to do that as well. If it all breaks down, though, we can probably annex them anyways. Uh. Let's save our guys. We're still fighting the mountains, so let's try that one. And hopefully we get through here, then we don't have to deal with this melee mountains. It's a peaceful unification. To negotiate a peaceful unification, I've spoken to the Ivory King in secret many years before I came to this land. As an outsider, yet that status didn't alter his perception of me. He is, as you said during the council, receptive to new ideas and ways beyond his own customs. Though his own core has grown suspicious of him, he stands by his open mind. He will travel to the city of Ganja with my message of unity and offer to him and his kingdom, a place in my imperium. Malakura bowed his... A bow to his lord, as you will, my emperor. I hope that the king will see reason. With that, Makoto rose and left the chamber. The board is set and the pieces are moving. Meeting with the Ivory King. Hive Ganja was small for a hive, yet still a sprawling city. The streets were packed in by thousands of peoples going about their lives. The markets were louder and saturated with the scents of modified spices, herbs, and other gro goods grown in underground greenhouses. Overseen by the Protoss casts. To the untrained and unfamiliar, navigating such a maze would nearly be impossible, but Malkador understood the geography of these places very well. The districts near the Palace of Tusks were far cleaner and suited the caste masters that lived there well. Malkador found and wound his way further through the streets until he came to the outer defenses of the palace. He presented his message to the gods who promptly escorted him inside. My illustrious king, the herald said, allow me to present Master Malkador, ambassador of the Himalazian emperor. Malkador did his courtesies, bowing to the king, yet he feigned frailty. The ivory king, of course, sat on a grand throne of elephantine tusks, bound together by bronze, ancient prizes of a long-dead species. The king whispered silently to one of his advisors, but Malkador could still perceive the threats to his life. Rise, Master Malkador, I've heard of your emperor's great conquest of the mountains, and I must say I'm impressed. I must take a powerful man, it must take a powerful man, to bring valley savages and la dragon lords and such under one banner. His full title, however, is rather bold, wouldn't you think? Malkador nodded. Indeed, my lord, but my emperor's ambitions are not limited to the Himalazia, as you see. The raptor Imperialis will one day be seen in every corner of Terra. The ivory king's half-hearted, sardonic smile faded. Why have you come, Malkador, of the Himalazias? He stepped forward, his elderly gait replaced with a bold stride, unification. The king raised a brow. Unification of what? Of this world? Our world? Come join our imperium and you'll be part of this greatest moment of our species history. The king chuckled. Then why, might I ask, would I do that? Your realm would be protected. To bring order to this broken earth. Let's bring, I want to bring order. 
To bring order to this broken earth, you do well to remember the uh, legacy our forebears left many thousands of years ago, my king. This was once a green and fertile world full of life and color. Our terror was a beating heart of the galaxy at one time. The emperor will see that that time reborn, and he asks you to join him in his quest. The king of palace will be known to all as among the first to have seen the truth. The ivory king's face showed no signs of either approval or disapproval, remaining silent but intent. And what would my own place be in this empire of yours, might I ask? You would retain your titles and positions so long as you remain loyal and just to the emperor and his law. Be fair to your subjects and allies, and you will rise high in the emperor's favor. The king will silent for a moment, pondering Malkador's words. Wait outside, Master Malkador. I must speak with my council on this matter. Malkador nodded respectfully and left the king's presence. And now we must wait his decision. After a time, the herald, the king herald, came forward to Malkador. The herald bowed, and Malkador did so in turn. The king has come to a verdict. Follow me. Standing. At the base of the Ivory King's throne, Malkador bowed once more. Rise. I have spoken with my council on your Emperor's offer. Th though our opinions on the matter were not unanimous, we still reached a decision. On top of this, I have given the matter much personal thought, and now I have sealed my decision. Malkador nodded. And what is your decision, then? The Ivory King rose from his throne and approached Malkador face to face. The Kingdom of Palace shall join your Imperium, now and forevermore. I will submit myself to your Emperor for the sake of my realm and all the realms on this earth. There were gasps and whispers from among the court, but not a moment after came the rumble of a pause. It was then that the Ivory King bowed to the sigilite. As a first gesture of respect to the Emperor's hand of authority, Malkador smiled, rise, and without a drop of blood, spilled. Good. Good. Al -ka Kamalupa. Oh, boy. Um, I really don't want to use these infantry divisions too much, honestly. I mean, don't get me wrong, we need to make these guys a little thicker, so we go at least up to 14. So we'll ruin our guns some more. I really want to use these guys. But I want you guys to be the strike force this year. Honestly, with three divisions... We can't, we can't train any more of these guys anyways. So I might just keep you guys here to do this. And really have some super special forces for over here too. Your goal would be to go from here. And go bond, two, three, four, five. There you go. And let me guess. We don't have... Nope. No cores just yet. There you go. That's nice. Alright. War goals. Gava Dava Vilia. Huh. Oh, over here too. Okay, so maybe we'll go to the world of those guys first. Um in the palace of Gualoria. Do we get any political power against or coring stuff? I guess we'll do this one seven days. A land of primate worshipping fools, the beliefs of the Gahadalans have put them at great odds with their western neighbors, the Ka Kahamanans. Yet perhaps this conflict can be used to my advantage. Well, might as well go this way first then. Cool. Let's, let's get all the war goals first, and then into Kahamana. The people of Kahamana worship the now long dead buffalo, revering it, revering it as some sort of god. Those mindless superstitions brought them at the odds with their eastern neighbor, the Gahadalala, the G dudes. Yet I could take advantage of this rivalry. Might as well, right? Might as well. Because we can. Happy January, everyone. Happy January. And into Gujara. Imp into Gujara desk. Alright, followed up probably with. Uh, Better radar, expansion of justice. Now that we have a small military built up, it is time to allow our army's might to expand even further. We're going to need more guns. Oh, do we need more guns? No, we don't. We need more power armor. And this type of power armor. Custodian power armor. Well, anyone have factions? Any allies? Anything like that? Nope. Okay, then. And there we go. Actually, can we get a man to go to war with other people? Hopefully. Hmm. Alright, not bad. Uh, I really don't know how strong these guys are. But I guess we're going to find out very soon. Guns looking great. Looking real, real great. Oh, military expedition. Oh, we get more weekly stability. Wow. Improve hive dwellers' conditions. Wow. Oh, Oh, this may make political power go negative if you, know, if you don't have enough. Unify with these guys? Oh. Minimum 30. 
Unit T with Palas. As the final scraps of combat clear, then now begins a bureaucratic process of unifying the Palasians' lands with ours. The process will be lengthy and relatively costly, but the fruits of our labor will give us full control over their region as well as their undying loyalty to the Imperial Truth. Ave Imperator. 90 days, huh? Nice. Oh, this is a massive war. Okay, how many divisions they have? Oh, that's a lot more than I thought they had. Okay, that's not good. Um, you guys just stop the attacks then. Okay, so this is a massive, massive war. Okay, I didn't realize this could be this big. Okay then. Um, that's a little bit too ahead of time. What if we were to grab some of this stuff? Yes. That's not good. We'll see what happens. We did push into them. I and mean, there is that. We've lost. We killed off forty thousand of them. Okay, good to know. Good to see. I didn't realize it was going to be such a massive war. I should have realized that. One hundred thirty divisions. Uh, stockpile. Not really sure yet. Well, we can try to go in. Obviously, the infantry is not going to be doing very well, but still, we're still mobilizing too. So, overall, not bad. We killed off a quarter million of them. Pretty good so far. Man, if we get tech right there, that'd be super good. There you go. Now those couple divisions are going to die there. Well, we cut off a third of a million. Pretty nice. Any upgrades? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? And no upgrades over there, so be it. Just need more power armor. Yeah. How's artillery doing, too? We have 18. I do want to boost that up quite a bit. Expansion of justice. Uh, let's see. Uh, rebuild old infrastructure. For our future wars to be successful whatsoever, we must rebuild the one strong foundations in these mountains. Yes, very good. Yeah, overall, we're doing really, really well. I want a lot of artillery. Jesus Christ. I mean, just just destroying these enemies. I love it so much. So much, man. Oh, cut utilities for the underhive. War propaganda. That's not bad. I like that one too. Mobilize a hive. That's not bad. It hurts our stability. It's not bad either. Uh, that's okay. Just more. That's pretty good. That's actually really strong. Improve hive developer conditions. Get even more war support. Wow. You know what? As much as I want to raise conscription level, I want more attack. Five percent is not very much, but five percent can make a difference. It can really make a difference. So. I mean, Jesus Christ. That's nuts. Ushotan. Nice. Better radar? I mean... Alright, they're gone. A little bit ahead of time. We're going to do that one. That's fine. And over here, land auction. Let's go with integrated support, because we can. And who's next? Ah, yes. Yes. Uh, before we go to war, let's double check how many divisions they do have, because I don't want to make a mistake. Too much of a mistake, at least. How much already do we have now? 25! Not as much as I'd like, but okay. Sure, why not? One, two, well, it's going along. We can only get 1.44 every single day. After we rebuild our infrastructure, we'll probably integrate mountainous railroads. Now that we have a stable foundation, we can continue our expansion to be integrated with... Expansion be integrated with the railroads with new infrastructure. Nice. That's gonna be a little bit wild to do. Oh, holy crap! We must accord all these areas. Look at that manpower. Oh, it's def oh my gosh, that's really strong. Nice. Imperium. Well, let's see what happens. How many divisions they got? Oh, okay, it's not as much as last time. Okay. Should he easily be able to win? Do we have any air superiority? Probably not too much, realistically. We'll probably have a little bit. Yeah, we're doing a little bit. That's not bad. We're doing a little bit. Not as much as I'd like, but that's alright. Kofir is gone. Unify with these guys, yeah. Uh, cool. Ave Imperator. Losses. Merely 61,000. Merely. Fuel, I guess. And who's the last one? Ah. This one, I'm going to feel pretty bad about killing them off, but not really. Realistically, not really. Cool. Akhamenid Empire. Oh, wow. 
yeah, North Africa conclaves, Europa, Iberia, Franc, Albion, and Merica. Mercia, Mercia, Pan Asific Empire, and Ursh. Ursh. Oh, baby boy, we're gonna do them dirty. Do them dirty as we possibly can. Techno Barbarians go bye bye. And they're. Is that it? That's the fastest group we actually took out so far. Alright, not bad. Pretty good. Cool. Alright then, in the palace of Garia. Much of the end has fallen under our banner. Now we have only one kingdom which truly stands in the way of this land. Complete unity. Moria. Over the years, many legends have risen in the secretive Taga King of Moria. He has never left this palace in Gara and never have ever entered it. Should I decide to speak with him, I must tread carefully. Oh boy, this is, oh, this is going to be a massive war. Ooh. We don't have enough divisions for this yet. Definitely do not. Um, get some more of these guys. That'd be important. We got a little bit more artillery too, which is really nice. Ooh, like, make these at least 20 combo with. Cool. Uh, how many divisions does he have? That He's probably got a lot of divisions. Probably too many for us to really fight because we don't have enough divisions on the road or, you know, to help guard the, the lanes, the lines, the entire front line. Um, artillery, yeah. Why not? Oh, I should have saved some PP for this F2. That's alright. Let's see, how many divisions? Does he have... He does not have F divisions either. We actually have barely enough. And if that's a case... Um, he doesn't have enough divisions on his line either. That's actually really nice. If that's a case, I want to have you guys come down here. And we'll start small and do some, like, cut. We'll cut through here. As long as we got one division per top right now, that's fine with us. Cut you down in half, maybe. And come over here. Just because I want to make sure that we have enough uh, love flowing, flowing through here. And by love, I mean divisions. And actually, yeah, I know. Getting a new commander for there. I just don't want to be bothered with this stuff. Go ahead. That's fine. Alright, and then we'll do terrain is our transport. Our populace is so familiar with the terrain that they sometimes do not need roads to transport supplies and advise our workers where to operate for the easiest paths. We can use this knowledge to construct more efficient infrastructure. Good. Lots of roads around here. We'll go to war very, 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 very soon. I just want to make sure. Oh, that place has a lot of infrastructure already. Loads of roads. Loads and loads of roads. I don't know how long this content's going to last, so we'll see. Artillery's looking... Could be a lot worse. Let's go through our uh, divisions here. Any other support? Uh, cavalry, do we have enough for that? Yeah, might as well. Oh, armor divisions too, if we want them, but... I guess we'll try it. Do they have any focus tree? No, they're not. They attack us? Good. We're going in immediately, too. I need you all to do the best you can. Mm, it's probably a really bad idea going to war with these guys, but whatever. I need you guys to go all right here and go right there and then follow right there. Force the attack. Go. Go, 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 go. Cut these divisions off. Cut them off. Cut them up. And cut them off. We could use more resources too. There you go. Come on. Come on. Break through them. Break through them. Come on. Oh, this is incredibly bloody. And oh my god, you're doing force defense, aren't you? There we go. Finally got rid of those pieces of garbage. Oh, we can't see the casualties. Come on, man. That's dumb. Well, we can see how many we've taken. 20,000 in the past year? That's not bad. In the past three months. So we've taken about 12,000 so far. What the? What are you doing? Dude. Seriously. I mean, yeah, I, I like what you're doing. How fast are you going? Just four kilometers. Where are you going? <laughs> Don't get encircled. <laughs> Dude. Alright, and robotic factories. Integrating our factories with this new and improved infrastructure, as well as our advanced robotics, is indeed a wonderful sight to behold, as we must begin construction as soon as possible. Nice. Unify with these guys. Gada da la ga ha da va la ha. Ave Imperator. And these guys should all be cut off. Construction trace is great. Well, we're definitely doing a good thing of damage to them, probably. Uh, oh, we can't pierce them all. There you go. Overall, not bad. 
Pretty good. Pretty good. Could be a lot better, but you know what? Whatever. Very nice. Ah, up to 43 divisions. I wish we knew how many things we killed off. They have no more infantry equipment, so we're we, we've won. We've literally just won. Good. Jolly good. So sad. Even the infantry can take them out. Oh, it's beautiful. Where did you go? What happened to India, man? Wait, where are we? Ah. Jesus Christ. This is nuts. This, this mod is... It's cool. Have they gone? Beautiful. Some more extraction, because we could really use it. So after robotic factories, I guess we'll do the Aquila over End. Oh, we need all these places. Do we not have all these places? Uh, this is no territory down there. I want to save our PP for some of this stuff. Wait. Kamarupa, Palace, Gadalava, Kamahamana, Gujara, Maras. Oh, say. Okay. Then we need this one. Ceylon, basically. Sri Lanka, which is totally fine. Ceylon. Alright. Why don't you guys cut these guys off like that? Shouldn't be too bad. Should not be too bad. But then again, I've been wrong before. So go and train if you need to. And robotic factories. Moran is killing itself. Very nice, very nice. The Emperor of Mankind questions Ceylon sovereignty. Yes. Oh, okay, that one yet. Um, cool. Let's do better radar. Mm, let's do some... Adamantinium mines. Although we may have a large industry, it seems useless without the sufficient resources to supply it. Expanding our mines to provide our industry with more resources is paramount to our success in civilization. Good. Oh, you still have cavalry there too, which we do probably want to increase the size of and make it a little better, but whatever. A fifth resource slot, not bad. We're just lacking a lot of artillery. And can we record anything yet? We have almost 8 million manpower, Jesus. Um, tribalistic. Looks like national populist to me, but who am I? Cool. Oh, wrong one. God dang it. Why did I get rid of the artillery? My bad. It's hard to see. It's hard to really tell the difference here. My bad. A few days left, and then we'll be able to hopefully core more stuff. Almost 8 million manpower jumps up to what? Nothing? It jumps up to something. Uh, yes, we'll go next. Nearly 8 million power. power. Unify? Yes, unify with Maria. Yeah, we basically got no manpower that time. Huh, it's weird. Alright, whatever. We should be able to go very, 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 very soon. Actually, with this, looks like we have a lot of issues with uh, supply. How many more days must we wait? Oh, we have no PP. Oh, that sucks. So we're going to probably go through one more before we can do the last one there. Um, mm, rockets. Let's do a regimental command and see what that one's about. The loving of forces has gone well, and even our administrators are overwhelmed with paperwork. However, the ad hoc irregular nature of these forces has proved problematic in regards to communication and grand strategy. As such, we are standardizing the command at the regimental level to ensure interoperability when they must work together in the field and to preserve or prevent any more incidents like what occurred during the confusion during the siege of Otormala. Make it more reinforced rate and planning speed. Of course, questioning other people's motives. Advanced machine tools are nice as well. We got some more stuff. Research, great. More resources, please. Because we could extract more except for rubber. Which sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, you're down here, aren't you? Yeah. A bing. A bong. We might need some logistics next, too. And actually, we have some PP. Ooh, about a week left for that. That's not bad. Oh, wow. Uh, there you go. That's not great, but whatever. Good enough. We might not need more divisions. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I shouldn't delete them, but whatever. Um, engineers, yeah. Or better recon. Let's get some better recon for now. There we go. Earth Shaker platforms. All right, my friends. Let's see what we can do. So far, not bad. Research. The dead. Ah, just in time. That worked out quite well. The Aquila over end desk. Cool. Uh, I'm not really sure what else we can do. The Sumhelia? Sumhelia? I wonder if we can go to war with those guys. They're kind of busy though right now. Can we go to war with these guys? 
I mean, it is one gigantic faction, but still. And what we like are butt stills. Uh, Artie's looking pretty good. Gun cutters, brawlers, maybe? Maybe more and more? Perhaps? Can we call anything else? Hopefully, yes. Ceylonia? Why not? Gujara first. No, Kamarupa. That'll be good, just because uh, they are down here and really close. So is this the end of the focus stream, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Because if it is, I'll read through the other focuses. And maybe we'll call it a campaign? I don't know. <laughs> Look at that. Just, it's not even here. The naval stuff has been taken out. But man, this mod moves fast. I love it. I love how fast this thing moves. Uh, for now, go and train. Cool. Command Squad Valdo. Alright, my friends. The Aquila over the land. Is that it? I don't know. Geno Soldiers. Well, actually, you know, let's read about something else. The Aeronautica Imperialis. To lay claim to this world, my Imperial must hold control of the sky. I will impart my wisdom upon my Aerotech engineers, bringing unto them the knowledge and spirit of mankind's ancient aerial pioneers. The enemies of unification will learn to fear the thunderous approach of the Imperium's Air Force. Is that it? I, I, I don't know. That might be it, so... Um... This... Is that it? I, I don't know. We got 500 political power. I'm going to assume that's it. So, if you'd like to read through these, please go right ahead. If there's more here, please let me know. And if you know anything about this mod and its development, please let me know in the comments as well. Just because I'd love to know more about this and see how far the dev the developers take this mod. Because I I know that this can probably go quite far. So, that'd be really cool if it got even further developed. Of course, we have the Geno Soldiers as well. But, it is what it is. The Gene Whips. Very cool. And Superior Coordination I like as well. Awesome. The Solar Auxilia. Cool. And we'll do that one too. Right now. A Tempestus Scions. Velatarus Storm Selections. The Biotechnical Division is cool. Oh, we get a program. Um, we get this one as well. Thunder Wars. We control Orar 2. Mark 2 Armor would be really awesome. Um, and the Better Radar, of course. We've got some Machines of Servitude. Improved Rockets. As well as Exterminatus. And Steel. Aerotech, Robo Processing, Expanded Synthetics, New Prothemium Reserves, and New Processing Methods. But, I guess that's going to be it for the campaign. I don't know. I don't. I, mean, I guess technically this is probably a beta or a demo. But regardless, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me, more, let me know, like I said earlier, more about this mod and, and like four, Warhammer 4K stuff. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And have a great rest of your day.